Praise the Lord Jesus. There are four kinds of Christians on this earth. I will always categorize it to four kinds of Christians. One, the Christian that believes that there is no such thing as spiritual warfare. They don't believe it. They say there is no such thing as spiritual warfare. We don't believe it. Then we have the, the, the second one that believe that there is a spiritual warfare, but they don't engage in it. They say, let us not call devil name so that the devil will not remember us. But let me tell you, whether you engage in this war or not, the devil will come. The devil does not come because we're engaging in a spiritual warfare. The devil comes because it is this natural, is this natural state to wage war against you. Whether you are engaging in a spiritual warfare or not engaging in a spiritual warfare, the devil will not stop. The devil is not coming to engage in a spiritual warfare because there is something so special about it. Because he wants to take that thing that the Lord has given to you that make you you. Which you're going to look into the scriptures. Then the, the third kind of people are the people that know that there is a spiritual warfare, but they engage in this spiritual warfare the wrong way. They know there is a spiritual warfare. In order for them to engage, they are Christians, they are believers. In order for them to engage in a spiritual warfare, they will have to go to Babalao. They know there is a spiritual warfare, but they don't know how to engage it. They engage it in wrongly. And some of them are other categories are the people that engage in a spiritual warfare in the wrong way. They don't have the right word of God for them to be able to engage in the right way. So they engage it in the wrong way. Then we have the fourth kind of people, those that knows about spiritual warfare and engage in it the right way. Whether you like it or not, the devil is coming for you. You have anointing, you don't have anointing, he will come for you. The more you are anointed, the more he will come for you. Why do you think that God gave you an angel that stands beside you? To find you. To look you in the mirror and tell you you are fine. The angels are equipped. The Bible says that the angels excel in strength. The angels are equipped to engage in a spiritual warfare. An angel does not have a particular power or ability. An angel's ability is determined by your own ability. The more you build, the more the angels build. If you don't build, it can't build. So if your angel must be strong, you must be strong. The Bible said that they excel in strength. You see, yesterday while we are praying, the Lord released an angel. Said the angel for this program has arrived already. Yesterday we saw them, they came. There is a spiritual warfare. It might shock you, but it's the truth. Whether you want to engage it or not, it will engage you. Praise the Lord Jesus. They said there is no spiritual warfare, but yet we have people that are poor and they are Christians and they work hard. Who is doing that to them? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is making them poor. How can we have Christians that work so hard and yet there is stagnation in their destiny and their family? And they say there is no spiritual warfare. There is no spiritual warfare, but the brother cannot stop masturbating or cannot stop fornicating. And you say there is no spiritual warfare. There is no spiritual warfare, and the brother that is a Christian cannot stop lying. And you say there is no spiritual warfare. There is no warfare. A believer is filled of the Holy Ghost, my brother. A believer is filled of the Holy Ghost. A believer cannot be possessed by a demon, but a believer can be demonized. And the essence of demonization is that devil will demonize you to an extent you will reject God and he will possess you. The reason why he demonized one part of your body. You see, one of the one of the deceptions, the devil, one thing you know the devil is two things. One thing is that he walks with fear, he walks with deception. And one of the greatest deception of the devil is to tell us that he does not exist so that we don't wage war against him. You see, when you are going for a war, for example, if I'm to battle a, a war now, and I have maybe 700,000 warriors, and my opponent have only 1,000 warriors, you see, in such war, I will win. So what the, devil, what the devil will do in this case is that he will put spies among us. The one that can open the door from within. That is why if a church must be destroyed, it must come from within. Nobody from outside can destroy a church. It is us within ourselves that kill ourselves. Mm. Oh, there is a rat that is in the house that told the rat outside that there was fish in the kitchen. And they will know, okay, okay. Okay, no. 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 Give me the book of Matthew 12, verse 22. You see, we never knew there was something about spiritual warfare. We never knew about until Jesus came. It was Jesus that blew the trumpet about spiritual warfare. He was the one that told us that there are kingdoms on this earth. There are three kingdoms in this world. The kingdom of God, number one. The kingdom of man and the kingdom of the devil. We see it scripturally. 
was no natural. He said, then they brought him a demon possessed man who was blind and mute. And Jesus healed him so that he could talk and see. So that is a warfare. A man could not speak, could not see. And the moment that man encountered Jesus, he could see. That means there was a spirit that held the eyes captive. They brought to him a demon possessed. They brought to him a demon possessed man who was blind. When the devil possessed you, the first thing he does is for you to be blind so that you don't know he is in you. When the devil entered who Peter. Peter began to do what seems like righteousness. But that was self-righteousness. He told Jesus, shut up. How can you say you will die? Come on, forbid it. I forbid it. I bind that spirit. He was mad. And Jesus looked at and said, Satan. Then he called Peter. He's an elderly man. Satan. And he said, get behind me. If it's in our today, they will say, that boy doesn't have respect. Praise the Lord Jesus. And the Bible says something. He said, then they brought to him a demon possessed man who was blind, mute, and Jesus healed him so that he could both talk and see. Next verse, please. This man was blind. Next verse. All the people were astonished and said, Could this be the son of David? Next verse. Walk with me, walk with me. But when the Pharisees heard this, they said, It is only by Beelzebub. Now, Beelzebub is not actually Satan. Beelzebub is like the PA to Satan. Beelzebub is not Satan. Beelzebub. There are four of them, but we're not talking about them now, right? <laughs> there are four of them. Four. The same way God, we have God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You see, the devil tried to build his own tomb. He said, it is only by Beelzebub, the prince of demon, that this fellow drives out demons. Drives out demons. And, they, and for the very first time, they don't understand. They said that this man, Jesus, was casting out demons by the, by the power of the dark world. And Jesus answered them. They did not say it. They said it in their heart. But Jesus had the gift called discernment of the spirit. He was able to draw and let's pass this follow me Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them every kingdom ah, Jesus is talking about the kingdom excuse me excuse me Jesus is saying something about the kingdom he said every kingdom divided against itself will not ruin will be ruined and every city or household divided against itself will not stand he was trying to tell them something let's pass he made it very clear let's pass if Satan drives out Satan he is divided against himself. Many of you think, you know, you watch Nigerian movie, you see power versus power. You see this team of native doctors fighting against themselves. He said, that is the lie, biggest deception of all time. The kingdom of darkness is organized. If they are not organized, they will not stand. The reason why we, the body, sometimes struggle is because we don't know how to organize ourselves. Pride in me has entered and the devil has hidden in our leg then our eyes could not look down to see because we have swallowed the treasures of human beings then we now have what belly that we can't see below anymore some of us in the church are suffering from spiritual pressure we have belly so big that we can't see where the devil is sitting you know when you tell a fat man to look down there's no point of him looking down because he can't see his feet he needs the mirror to be able to see the feet even when he lies down and look down the belly has obstructed Understand what I'm saying. If Satan drives out Satan, he is divided against himself. How can his kingdom stand? So, number one, the devil has a kingdom. And in that kingdom, the devil is the king of that kingdom. Number two, next verse, please. And if I drive out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your people drive them out? So then they will be your judges. Next verse, please. But if I drive out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. We have seen two kingdoms. Hmm? Praise the Lord Jesus. How many kingdoms have you seen? Two kingdoms. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of the devil. And they say there is no spiritual world. 
That is what they told us. Look at, give it to him. He said, drive out. Another word for the word drive out is called force. He's talking about cast out. Maybe he's the word cast out demons. Yes. He said, but if I cast out devils by the spirit of God, then the kingdom. Now, in order to cast something out, the word cast out means to force something out forcefully. If, if your landlord comes to you and says, um, um, Chidera, your house rent has expired. You just please do not relieve you. You won't leave. Do I have people that will be honest online? We are in the church. You will, leave. you will think that in that kind gesture, you mean there is grace. But when, when in this time, if your landlord drives you out or casts you out, what he does is that he comes when you are unprepared. And he doesn't come knocking, he kicks down the door. And when he kicks down the door, he does not smile with you. He rough handles you, mal handles you. Then he throws you out. Then he locks the door and don't give you access again. The Bible says that is what we do. Cast out. I don't think that's how to show love. If I come now and I hold you and I drive you out of your house, is that love? No. The Bible is saying that there is an ability, that there is a spiritual warfare. That one of the ways to engage in this spiritual warfare is called casting out. So that means that demon was exhibiting in that man's life without legal permission. And when Jesus comes, he would have had the legal authority can drive you out. I don't, I don't know if it's in your Bible. I don't know. 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 The Bible says that what he drives them out. But if you don't use the word cast out, you use drive out or force out. In order for me to force you out of a thing, it means there is a problem. It means there is a battle, there is something. But the reason why I'm able to cast you out is because I have stronger authority. Is that correct? I don't think your, your son of two years old can come to your house and cast you out. Or drive you out. Let me use the word you are familiar with. Drive you out. As he's dragging you, he'll be saying, Chichi, I'll slap you. He's drawing your leg. The more he draws, he says, come on! But if you are dragging your son, as he shouted, Daddy, I will not leave you, lift him up. He will be there doing his leg like this on the air. You are lifting him up. Then he said, Daddy, I don't want to leave you. Open the door. He doesn't have a choice. Daddy, I'm not staying. You fling him out. Daddy, I want to come back. You shut the door. That is cast out. Nobody cast out smiling. It means there is a warfare that is going on. Even as we are speaking now, there is a warfare between some people and sleep. May you win such war. May you win such war. 12 o'clock, there is a warfare that engages you. God's sleep is a spiritual warfare. How many times have you told God you were fast? You said 6 to 6, you did 6 to 10. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You told the Lord next week you go to. No, it's not a spiritual warfare. It's a warfare spiritual. Yes, 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 yes. Give me the book of Daniel 4, 17. We have seen two kingdoms. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of what? Darkness. Is that correct? Now let's see the kingdom of man. Daniel 4, 17. Now I'm going to go to the B part, but just listen. He said, this matter is by decree of the watchers and the demand by the word or by the word of the Holy One to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. In the kingdom of men. So there are three kingdoms. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of man, and the kingdom of the devil. And there is one thing each of these two kingdoms want is the kingdom of man. Everyone is fighting for dominion and that dominion is you. God wants your soul. The devil wants your soul. And the only one that can allow such to happen is you. You see, God can say a word, the kingdom of man and the kingdom of the devil can make that word to fail like if it is not small. I told you that God is as powerful as the knowledge of him you can. If you are like that again, what you don't know is bigger than you. That is why in the case of the, of, of the, of the, of the political war in Nigeria, God will say that I have brought this man out. It is left for you to vote this man. God will not come and do for that scar to vote. God will not come and push you to do anything. God, he said, I've placed before you life and death, but I want you to choose life, that you may live. God will not force you to choose life. 
presence of the Lord Jesus.